Well, hello, my radio friends. Now, quite commonly, I'll post videos of my my sets in operation and some of my latest restoration progress, but rarely do I touch on equipment, and more specifically, volt ohmmeters. And that's what I wish to touch on in this video, um, is just that, the volt ohmmeter. There are typically two types of volt ohmmeters. One's manual ranging, and one is auto ranging. The one to my left is my Fluke 179. It is an auto range meter. To my right is a manual range meter. One will notice the manual range has a lot more numbers around a periphery. Because one has to select manually the range that one that one is looking to uh, to read or anticipate. The one on the left, the auto range meter, does that automatically. Um, auto range meters are typically slightly more expensive, but this day and age, even the auto range meters are, are quite reasonable. But with that said, I want to touch on the manual range meter in this video, only because it's slightly a little more difficult to operate, but still not, not difficult. Um, one will notice on the, uh, periphery of the manual range meter, there's a plethora of numbers around the periphery, and each of these numbers is broken down into individual segments. Now, the segment to the upper left reads DCV. That's DC volts. And we'll notice that segment goes from here over to here. So if one's reading DC volts, one's going to select a, a voltage within that range. To the lower left, is an, it says ohm. So if one is ohming something out, looking for a particular resistance value, one is going to select a range, a numerical range within that segment, and repeat it all the way across the dial. Here's your AC volts. Once again, two ranges. Here's your DC amps. If one's reading current, DC current, one would select a range accordingly. Now, this, this run you see here, the symbol you see here, this diode symbol, that's simply a beeping continuity tester and also is just that for, for testing diodes. Um, and depending upon what one is reading will dictate where one places the meter leads. One will notice the common is just that. It's common to all ranges within the meter. But one will notice there are two different plugins for the positive lead. If one is reading volts, in this, in this case, volts, ohms, or milliamps, one will place the positive lead here. Or if one is reading 10 amps, a fairly high current, one would merely move this leader, meter lead, the positive lead, to here. But in this tutorial, in this video, we're going to be focusing on the ohms reading. So we're going to put it in this particular position here that says volts, ohms, milliamps. And we're going to focus on the ohms range. Because ohming something out is probably the most common uh, test one will ever do in radio restore and radio restoration, radio repair. Because with ohming something out will tell you a whole lot about a particular set. And what I want to touch on first and foremost, whenever you're ohming something out, if you're doing an ohm reading and resistance reading, be absolutely certain voltage is turned off and the device you're testing. Turn your radio off and unplug it. I, I, whenever I'm doing ohms checks, I like to unplug the set. That way there's no possibility of power being applied to anything. Because in ohms range, the meter provides its own power. Typically, there's a 9-volt battery within. It will send a voltage out the positive lead through the device you're testing back into the negative lead. And depending upon a disparity between the input voltage, or excuse me, the output voltage and the input voltage, that will give a corresponding reading. At, uh, now, in this particular range we touched on a moment ago, there's... Arranges from 200, 2000, 20K, 200K, 
and 2000K, which is essentially 2 meg. So what one selects, these particular ranges and ohms, that's a very common, uh, confusing item, I guess, for people. The range you select is the highest range or highest reading you could attain within that range. So if I'm testing something that's between 0 and 200 ohms, say I'm testing something that I anticipate is going to be 100 ohms, you always select it to the next highest range. So I would go to 200. Anything between 0 to 200, I'm going to put to the 200 ohms range. If I'm testing that I, something that I suspect is between 200 ohms and 2,000 ohms, I'm going to put it to the 2,000 ohms range, and that'll test everything, like I said, between that, that range, 200 to 2,000. Same as we go up the scale. If I'm testing something that's between, that I suspect is going to be, say, 5K, I'm going to put it between the 2,000 and 20K, which I'm going to put it in the 20K range because that'll test everything within the perimeter of the, of the range between here and here. Same way up the scale. If I'm testing something between 200K and 20K, I'm going to put it in a 200K range. And something between 2 meg and 200K, I'm going to put it to the 200K range and, and work it across that way accordingly. What I'd like to do in this video is... is is the let's just test a device if I may we're going to test this audio transformer in fact allow me to move this maybe in such a fashion where you can see a little better and we are going to test the primary and secondary of this audio transformer a common faulted item and 20 sets now we're going to because we know we're, we're ohming it out so we're going to move to an ohms position and I'm anticipating the primary it's going to be less than 2,000 ohms, but more than 200, so I'm going to put it to the 2,000 ohms range. I'm going to place my meter leads together and make sure I get a very low reading. And in this case, I get all zeros across the board. That tells me that my meter leads have good continuity and my volt ohm meter has a good battery. So I place my meter leads to the terminals here that are labeled primary, and it's going to give me a reading. In this case, it's 1,087. That tells me it's 1,087 ohms on the primary. So the primary of this transformer is good. Now the secondary, I'm going to suspect it's going to be higher than 2,000 ohms. But it's not going to be as high as 20,000. So I'm going to move to the 20,000 ohms range. Once again, that will test between 20,000 and 2K within that particular range. Put my meter leads to the audio transformer. And there is five, whoops, let's get here, 4.79. Now, don't let that confuse you. It's not 4.79 ohms. That's 4.7K. Because you're in the 2K to 20K range, everything within this range is going to be 2,000 ohms or higher up to 20K. So, I go to here to here. It reads 4.79, but that's actually 4,790 ohms or thereabouts. So the secondary of this transformer is good. So that's a good transformer, primary and secondary ohm well. Let's check a resistor, shall we? This resistor reads 5.6K, which is 5,600 ohms. So I'm going to put my meter lead right where it's at in the 20,000 ohm range because this 5.6K falls between 2,000 and 20K. So I'm going to put it in a 20K setting. Put one meter lead to one end of the resistor, one meter lead to the other. And it reads 5.56, 5,560 ohms. Well within tolerance of a 5,600 ohm resistor. It reads 5.56K, and the resistor is valued at 5.6K. So it is, it's, it's about 400 ohms low, well within the tolerance of that resistor. So that resistor reads well. One other thing I wish to make mention of, if you're, if you're reading resistances of items that are low in value, a low resist, say 1,000 ohms or less or something of that value, and it's probably a good practice regardless, do not place both your fingers on the device you wish to test. 
because it will alter the value. It uh, because it will it will actually take your body and take it in consideration with the value. Because if you notice, you watch. I had a different value when I put both my meter leads and my tips and my fingers. I read five point four seven. I remove one meter lead. I touch it and I touch my meter to it. I get five point five six. So the value differs because what's happening, if I put both my fingers on it, that meter read, not only is it reading that resistor, but it's reading going through my body back to this meter lead to that resistor. So when you notice the values did change, 5.52, and here was 5.56. So they did change. So word of caution, when you're ohming something out, no harm in holding the resistor in one end of your hand like so, but always touch the other one independently. Do not put your fingers to hold both points together. Um, I know I went through it rather quickly. I hope it added some clarity. At a later time, I may go through each of these functions and do a video accordingly and show you what each one does, how each one operates. But uh, they all operate pretty much the same. If you're reading voltage, you just go to respective voltage rating one, one would anticipate, just like doing a resistance, a resistive reading one will anticipate. Well, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to ask. And I don't mind at all answering any questions you might have. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And of course, as... As always, until next time.